All right, thank you for joining me at FutureMoneyTrends.com. I'm very excited to introduce you to Jeffrey Tucker. If you've ever been to Mises.org uh, or seen any videos about Austrian economics on the, on the Internet, you've probably seen his face. Uh, he's done interviews, and he, and he also gets interviewed as well. And uh, he's actually the chief editor of Laissez Faire Books. Mr. Tucker, thank you for being with us today. It's really great to be here. Thank you for having me. Sir, I want to talk to you about the, the markets right now. There's kind of like a frame job. The, 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 in the mainstream press and even in, in D.C., everybody's saying that the crisis of 2008 was caused by deregulation, by, by the markets. Yeah. What do you say when you when when you how do you counter that when you, when you talk well, to somebody? So the thing is that markets are always part of reality. It's impossible to get rid of the market. If we got rid of the market, we'd all be living in caves and die within a matter of weeks. So of course, yes, the market played a role in the crisis, but it was a question of whether or not the markets were distorted or not, and they were seriously, insanely distorted. <laughs> By, by, by the Federal Reserve and, and the gigantic regulatory apparatus that exists. I mean, the idea that anybody would be really talking about deregulation right now is a little bit absurd. I mean, we live in an age of hyper-regulation. Everything is getting more and more regulated every day. The economy is regimented absurdly so, and it's one of the reasons we've not been able to readjust after the, after the burst of the bubble in 2008. There's been no readjustment. Do you think we'll be able to ever have a, a life, or this generation will ever see a life where the, we have no Federal Reserve? Do you ever see a day like that? Uh, no, but we could see the invention of an alternative uh, framework for the financial world growing out of digital uh, economics, a digital economy, and uh, entrepreneurship uh, taking place every day in the digital world. I mean, we could see a parallel financial institution developed within the within the world of the internet. Now, there are people like James Turk who've created uh, not a digital currency, but it's, you know, you, you have your gold money account, yeah. uh, and, and they're trying to get yeah. businesses where you can purchase stuff. And there's also something called Bitcoin. I'm yes. not really familiar with it. Right. What are your thoughts on something like gold money or Bitcoin? Well, I think these are all amazing ideas, and there would be far more of them if we would deregulate the system. Right now, the government's insisting that we all use the dollar and use it in the old-fashioned way, and that's it. I mean, the Federal Reserve is not adapted to the digital age or the, or the Treasury Department or anybody else. The governments are unwilling to let the monetary system take the same route that everything else has taken. You know, uh, they, they want to keep us back in the Stone Age where we're all just kind of exchanging their monopoly, paper, and nothing else. So if we deregulate that and, and do what F.A. Hayek suggested, which was to denationalize the money, we would see thousands of competing currencies going on every day. So some of the people who have attempted to invent alternative monetary systems have gotten in trouble with the law, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which is absurd. So I admire these companies like Bitcoin and, uh, and others who are attempting to create alternative monies and stay within the framework of uh, the legal apparatus, but uh, one way or the other, we're going to see the reinvention of the financial monetary system in the future because the state system has failed. Uh, there's a small liberty movement, and most of them would call Ron Paul their, their I guess, the godfather liberty movement because he woke so many up. Yeah. So it's really hard to get excited about somebody else, even a Rand Paul or, or, or a, a Gary Johnson for many. Where does this liberty movement, these this tens of thousands of people showing yeah. up to the Ron Paul rallies, where, what's going to happen to them? Where do they go now? Well, I think you know what they should do is listen more carefully to Ron Paul's speeches. I mean, Ron doesn't actually believe that the answer is in political activism. I mean, he doesn't. He thinks the answer is in intellectual activism and also uh, entrepreneurship. There are plenty of things for people to do to advance liberty besides just continuing to yell at the state, get smaller, get smaller, give us more, give us our rights. I mean, that, this it doesn't seem to be working very well. Yeah. But there are ways to f uh, dig underneath the mountain, go around the mountain, you know, find new tools to scale the mountain. And there are other more creative ways to go about advancing liberty besides just you know, getting involved in politics in a conventional way. So I think people need to listen very carefully to what Ron has said. He does not believe that our salvation is in, ele in electing the right person to office. It is not. In fact, the elected politicians have very little to do with the operation of the state as it exists. The whole state is a gigantic permanent bureaucracy, mm -hmm. and, uh, which includes the Federal Reserve uh, and uh, hundreds of millions of, well, millions of other people, permanent bureaucrats who are totally immune from elections. The elected politicians are just a, a small veneer on the top. They have very little knowledge of control of, over what goes on underneath that's, that uh, substructure of the, of the state itself. So that's what we need to 
uh, focus on, deal with the reality that that's our problem. It's not just electing the right people. It's not going to do the. It's not going to be the answer. We need more creative ways. Now, what is the current state uh, and life expectancy of the United States with? 22% of people just being completely on the government, being paid to live here. Yeah. 43% not paying income taxes. Of course, I'm not, I wish the other people weren't paying income taxes, but so many people are, are being paid by the government. And then, of course, all of us are life. So even mm. me, for an example, I, uh, I own a rental property. Mm. Um, the tenant is Section 8. So they're yeah. propping the rents up. Yeah. Many people in the area are buying homes with uh, treasury backed mortgages. Yeah. So we're all connected to this right. thing now. What is the state of the union? How long can this go on? <laughs> so I don't care that much about the union anymore, and I don't know how many <laughs> people even do. I have this old-fashioned idea of nationalism, you know, uh, where we're Americans to the exclusion of everybody else in the world. I mean, this is really decaying. The, the state's borders on the maps are increasingly irrelevant in a mm -hmm. digital age. So our prosperity as a people is very much connected with prosperity of people around the world. Other places around the world are seeing liberty rise, while in the United States we're seeing it fall. Some people are very pessimistic um, about the future in terms of the U.S. economy, and other people are very optimistic about uh, the economy and the future. I'm, I'm both. I'm pessimistic about the physical world as it exists in the nation state of the U.S. I mean, mm -hmm. the regulatory apparatus is so gigantic and constricting and regimenting, and it's destroying entrepreneurship every day. Federal Reserve with this ridiculous zero interest monetary policy is not going to do anything for anybody. We're going to see many years ahead of perpetual bust, where opportunities are just declining, mostly in the physical world. On the other hand, in the digital world, which is increasingly global, increasingly international, has many, many opportunities for young people today. And, no. and we're going to see the, the, the reduction of poverty that's taking place around the world continue only because of the invention of digital media and that free space, relatively free space, called the digital world. And that's why I'm very optimistic. Now, most Americans live in a, in a, in a world where they, they believe they are free. Um, if you yeah. ask most Americans, they would say they live in a free country, they right. live in free markets. Um, have, have the American people been conditioned to believe this from the state itself, or is this just by default? Yeah, well, I think most people they have been preached to year after year, and it, you know, it was true in the old Roman Empire, too. I mean, if they keep telling you, well, you're so lucky to be living in this great free society. And they said this in Russia, too. You know, so, no, Americans are clueless about this. You know what, you know, what breaks the consciousness about, about this is, or opens up the conscious, consciousness about um, our relative lack of freedom is traveling internationally. I always urge young people to get out of the country, travel around the world. You'll discover that the police state, as we know it today, especially since 9-11, is not the norm. And you go to a place like Spain or Brazil, or Malaysia, or practically anywhere else in the, in the world, you found that you're not hunted constantly and hounded and watched uh, the way you are in the United States. We've become a kind of police state over the last 10 or 12 years. It's very, very scary. Americans are mostly unaware of it. It's like the old story of the frog that's, that boils slowly, you know, when you, when yeah. you heat up the water. It's, it's that sort of situation. But I don't know. I mean, um, uh, once people leave the country, they discover the, the truth. However, as the economy continues to decline, as young people face fewer and fewer prospects, we're going to see a rise of, of an anger in the population. We're already seeing that. It expresses itself in the protests, movements of all sorts that we're seeing. And at some point, it's going, to, it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter, and it's going to flare up. And we're going to see what kind of uh, uh, political effects that's going to have. I don't know if they're going to be good or they're going to be bad, but we're going to see something dramatic in the future. I feel certain about this. Well, I hope I hope you're right. As yeah. far as you know, it's got to get worse before it can get better. Maybe. But um, as far as uh, the, the the mindset of people, I'm just trying to see how do you how do you flip somebody to believing in liberty when they already think they're free, or how do you flip somebody to liberty when when so many people have been conditioned to be busybodies on? They're worried about what Mitt Romney makes for a living. Uh, they're That's worried about what you absurd. know one percent right. makes, you know, or whatever. How do you flip this mindset? It seems like yeah. they're hardwired uh, people right now. They do. They well, refuse. Liberty. People tend to change their minds about things once it, once the oppression affects them personally. You know, they get wrapped up in uh, the criminal justice system, or their business fails because of uh, too high regulations or taxes. Or they get fired from the job because the business had to cut uh, em employees due to some you know regulatory mess or whatever. Once the oppression of the state affects people personally, then they begin to look for answers. And I really think that 
that that is the trigger that makes it happen. And these days, of course, you can find out the truth about things. Um, I mean, you can go to my website, uh, laissezfaire.org, lfb.org. We have a club that's ten dollars a month. We deliver eBooks every week to you with video explanations. The the release we're we're putting out today is a is a book by Frank Chodorov called The Rise and Fall of Society, and I think it's the best political work ever written. It reveals the truth about politics and 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 human freedom. So I mean, the literature is out there; it's available. Mm -hmm. But a person has to there has to be some inner spark that makes them long for it and look for it. And as the misery continues to spread and rise, we're going to see people looking for more answers outside conventional politics. In closing, a lot of people in the Liberty Movement also get into a lot of conspiracies and stuff like about the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Um, and I know it's, there's some things about the Federal Reserve that are very secret, but when it comes to like the person, Ben Bernanke, yeah. do you think he genuinely thinks he's going to be able to fix the economy or does he know that he is just up, it's just not going to work? Well, it's pretty funny to me every day uh, you see the financial press say, well, the Fed is considering QE3 or another big round of easing or whatever. You know, they all know they've done everything that they can possibly do, but they can't admit it openly. You know, they always mm -hmm. have to hold out the possibility they have still more tools to use in the toolbox that they've yet to open and not to worry. But the truth is there are no more tools left. They've done everything they can do. And I think Bernanke knows this. I think he's sweating it out every day. You know, I mean, this, uh, they've driven interest rates to, to zero and negative, really. And now we're seeing the same thing happen in Europe and now even in China. Um, this is a very bad policy. But what else are they going to do? They don't know what else to do. Yeah. The problem is that we never had a full liquidation after the bust of 2008. And until that liquidation occurs, there are no tools on this planet that are going to repair the economy and make it anything like what it was, which is tremendously tragic. Do you think this eventually results in a currency crisis, or do we have some type of deflationary, um, you know, yeah, like a depression? Yeah, I don't like the have any uh, fixed view on that. I've read both points of view. Whatever, whatever happens, we do know that the banking system is fundamentally broken. Uh, whether or not we're going to see a hyperinflation in the future very much depends on, you know, uh, many, many factors that can't be controlled or really anticipated. I don't know. But we do know that the current policies are making a, a, a mess, a further mess out of an already existing mess. I mean, we're going to look back in 50 years and people are going to say, what was wrong with those people? What were they thinking? Why didn't they just let the bust occur, clean out the system, as happened in the early 1980s or the early 1920s, clean out the system and then restore prosperity? I mean, it would have happened. But yeah. they've refused to do it for political reasons and, and intellectual error, both. Has the U.S. economy ever, has the U.S. United States ever had a free market? Well, I'm very much an admirer of the Gilded Age, where we saw, you know, growth of, uh, we had a nice gold standard, we had relatively t low tariffs, I mean, there were no income taxes, no relevant regulations on, on practically anything. I know this is the age, everybody condemns the age of robber brands, but guess mm -hmm. what? People started living longer lives. Incomes across the board in all classes uh, went went way up. We had you know between uh, seven and even twelve percent growth in those years. The greatest prosperity ever known to man, and the history of mankind was known in that thirty-year period that we call the, the Gilded Age. That was a relatively free market, and I think that restoring something like that would be a good a good start. Mr. Tucker, if somebody would like to uh, reach out to you or uh, learn more about liberty yeah. or, or Mises' ideas of economics, yeah. uh, where is the best place for them yeah, to go? Head over to uh, my website, lfb.org. Every day I write another article. We've got a vast archive, and it's growing all the time. Love to welcome anybody as a club member. It's our little private society of learning um, and exchange of ideas. So love to see you there. Thank you so much. Okay, You're a good pleasure. man. Thank you. Appreciate it.